In light of India's image as a leading nation in the IT world, technologies, medicine, one may have high hopes from India's technological institute and universities. On the other hand, those institutes may have their own challenges or limitations. The purpose of this Bharat educational series is to understand and analyze the depth of India's education institute in contest of world standards. The Bharat educational series also aims to study the prospectus of Indian students participating in their own well-being as well as enhancing and modernizing high-tech education in India. Our first episode is on a newly evolved Indian Institute of Technology, Jammu. There have been much media propaganda against India in contest of the decision to removing Article 370 and 35A in Jammu and Kashmir. Contrary to their propaganda, terrorism spill over in Jammu and Kashmir reduced to significant extent. Now, opportunities in business, tourism and education emerged, but all those happenings were being halted to a certain extent due to the COVID pandemic. However, few years before revocation of Article 370 and 35A, the Indian Institute of Technology Jammu as a public research university came into existence in 2016 when a memorandum of understanding between Department of Higher Education and Government of Jammu and Kashmir and Ministry of Human Development India was signed. The state government has provided the land measuring 159 hectares for establishment of India's Institute of Technology at Jammu. Started functioning from IIT Jammu started functioning from 2016 itself from a temporary campus within Jammu city. Construction of transit camp also started in the same time as it was ready for operation within a year. The transit campus spread about 25 acres within the site of the permanent campus with build-up area about 2 lakh square feet became an operational from August 2017 with 2017-2018 session commencing on the permanent com campus. The hostels are well equipped for a comfortable lodging and boarding for 650 students. Now it houses full strength of B.Tech as well as M.Tech student. The campus is well connected to Jammu and is located on the national highway connecting Jammu to Srinagar from the main Sumo city. The academic program of IIT Jammu follows the curriculum of Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. IIT Jammu will evolve its own curriculum with time. IIT Jammu offers B.Tech in Chemical, Civil, Computer, Electrical and Mechanical Engineering. In M.Tech, IIT Jammu offers Computer Science Engineering with specialization in Data Science and Information Security, Electrical Engineering with specialization in Communication and Signal Processing. Civil Engineering with specialization in Tunnel Engineering, Computer Technology, RA, PhD thesis could be designed in Chemistry, Civil Science and Electrical Engineering, Humanities and Social Science, Mathematics, Material Engineering, Mechanical Engineering and Physics. Indian Institute of Technology ka iftata 6 August 2016 ko hua tha. Is institute ne IIT Delhi ki zere negrani apne kaam ki shuruat ki. Jammu Kashmir ki state government ne 159 yani 159 hectare zameen ka tukda faraham kiya tha. اب اس زمین کے ٹکڑے پر بنے ہوئے مستقبل کے کیمپس کو جو آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں جس کی ڈرونز کے ذریعے ایریل فوٹیج بیٹس کے ساتھیوں نے جمہو سے تیار کی ہے جمہو میں ہمارے ان ساتھیوں نے نہ صرف ڈرونز سے پورے کیمپس کا ایریل جائزہ لیا بلکہ کیمپس کے اندر ڈپارٹمنٹس لیبارٹریوں اور لائبریری کے مناظر بھی پیش کی ہے اس موقع پر ہمارا ساتھ نبھانے والے پریزنٹر ساتھی وشوا رانجن پنڈتا نے پروفیسر منوج سنگھ گور پروفیسر اشوک سرکار کے انٹرویوز بھی کیے جن میں ان سے کیمپس کی سرگرمیوں آئی آئی ٹی جمہو کے چیلنجز کی کھل کر بات چیت ہوئی اس موقع پر سٹوڈنٹ کانسل کے جنرل سیکٹری شبہم گور نے بھی سٹوڈنٹ کی طرف سے بات چیت کی کیمپس کی لیبارٹریوں تک بھی بیٹس کی ٹیم کی رسائی ہوئی اس سلسلہ میں ہم آئی آئی ٹی جمہو کی انتظامیہ کے بے حد مشکور ہیں کووٹ کے زمانے میں آئی آئی ٹی جمہو سے آن لائن کلاسز بہت منظم انداز میں ہو رہی ہیں اس سلسلہ میں پروفیسر دریتری رات جی اور دوسرے پروفیسروں کی جلکیاں بھی آپ دیکھ سکتے ہیں material balance over the total products then it will be MF plus MC right so and what will be the efficiency in general efficiency would be 
how much you want to separate and how much you have actually separated this is the general general definition of any efficiency of any device right so if i want to now if i fix one particular uh, component of let's say i want to fix that i want to separate all the coarser particles who we who have side uh, that you choose the choreographic view points that you want to explore so we have seen many different बीट्स में हमारी इस डॉक्यूमेंट्री का मकसद आपको भारत के साइंस और टेक्नोलॉजी के एक, एक कैंपस की कुछ दास्तान आप तक पहुंचाना था हम आइंदा भी इस तरह की डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज आपको दिखाते रहेंगे ताकि आपको अंदाज़ा हो कि भारत में साइंस और टेक्नोलॉजी की तालीम और बढ़ोतरी के लिए क्या काम हो रहे हैं बीट्स का असल मकसद भारत में तलीम के उस लेवल तक पहुंचने की बातचीत खुलकर करना है जिस लेवल पर भारत को आज की एडवांस दुनिया में मुकाबला करना है वी हैव प्रोफेसर अशोक सरकार वेदर्स ही इज डीन एकेडमिक अफेयर्स आईआईटी जम्मू वेलकम सर सर माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू इज वेयर डज दिस इंस्टीट्यूट स्टैंड फॉर व्हेन इट कम्स टू प्रोवाइडिंग द बेस्ट एजुकेशन टू इट्स स्टूडेंट्स यू हैव सी वी आर quite new institution as you know 2016 we have started and what we have achieved in last 4 or 5 years i would say it is remarkable okay if you compare with uh, you know uh, new ideas that came up at the same time more or less i think we are comparatively we are doing quite well okay and in terms of number of students intake number of programs we are offering the quality of education we are offering i think we should be proud of what we have achieved in the last 5 years Okay, so where do you think the institute lacks in terms of attaining its goal? Uh, how can you make it better? Basically, you see now, one is we are lacking at this point of the infrastructure because of COVID. You know, okay. the kind of planning we had for construction of facilities, it has we could not achieve it this year. So we had a plan of uh, say admitting slightly more number of students. but because of lack of space we could not do that similarly we had plan of offering a few more mtech programs because of lack of space you cannot do that that is you know from the infrastructure point infrastructure of view, point of view yes. but otherwise you see now new education policy has come they have come up with many ideas you know so we'll have to look into that and then we'll have to reorient ourselves to how to achieve those nep goals you know so that is i think lacking if you ask me that is the only thing which, which is lacking that we have not aligned as yet because it is a new year 2020 yes. only with the any it will be implemented uh, from 2022 yeah but we'll have to plan, plan. so we have plan working on that it will take some more time how to go about that and it will be done at the national level i suppose we will be a party to that so that is the only thing i can see that you know uh, we are lacking as such okay so what sort of planning you think uh, you can help to upgrade the curriculum you see we have spent lot of time in development of curriculum initially when it started we are mentored by iit delhi so we just copied the you know iit delhi curriculum okay then we invited number of experts particularly from mainly from iits and work on developing our own curriculum okay so which is definitely you know the uh, better compared to what we had earlier so we have last two years we have been following that okay. but in the process we are finding some you know small adjustment we may have to make so we are planning to have another meeting with some experts shortly this covid is creating problem for us and some minor adjustment can be done uh, not not major you know small adjustment will be making shortly okay so uh, how can the students included in the alumni can perform better in the workplaces alumni unfortunately don't have alumni base, base. as yet you know the yes, first, first first batch, batch has graduated only. recently yes but we are in touch with some of the alumni they are from iits but they are from this this region okay they graduated from iit delhi iit bhu and they visited us so i we consider them as alumni of you know <laughs> iit jammu they are very you know very happy that iit has come to iit jammu okay so they have a, you know already promised the what kind of help 
they could provide. If we approach them, they'll be providing us. So, I think we have got a separate unit of alumni affairs now, and gradually, in the, as base, you know, increases, widens, then we'll be taking help, their help, you know. In, okay. Yeah. Sir, why are Indian IITs, no, not only Jammu IIT, overall the number of IITs we are having ranked so low in the world, a wide ranking of inst education institutions. If you do any IIT or IIM, any, any institution of India, particularly speaking about IIT, why? You see, there are many reasons for that. If we look into our curriculum, your research output, I think we are doing quite well. But the parameters, you know, they, they take for ranking, it is not supporting us. Okay. For example, you know, a lot of uh, kind of uh, weight is given on international students, okay. international faculty. So in those areas we are lacking. But if you look into the major core, like uh, teaching and, and you know faculty members, quality of faculty, we are, we are doing quite well. But few parameters we need to improve because of the, it is a government institution and uh, there are certain restrictions, yes. they are aware, but gradually are opening up and okay. in fact IITs will be very happy to get for the students. But we have not uh, done any concerted effort on that, that is the one of the reasons, similarly getting faculty from outside okay. to spend here or, or joining here, which is almost impossible with the kind of salary structure if you compare with the West, you know. Okay. So these are the reasons we are, we are lacking behind. These are, plus the perception score is sometimes, you know, if we, we MIT and Harvard, you know, we are definitely not reached that level. And the kind of research activities we are doing well, but even then we have got restrictions. We have, the fund is limited. Okay. And the government funding is mo mostly the, you know, only source of research. research. So we have not developed the industry linked research as yet and for that I think um, educational institution not to be blamed as that it is a responsibility of both industry and so if we take it up I think already work is going on I think in few years time we will we'll find that our ranking has gone up means in, you are hopeful that by the next decade uh, it is will be in the top 100 yeah, of the yeah. world ranking. we know our you know this uh, this uh, negative points negative or whatever you put it we know about that, we are working on that, but there are certain restrictions as you know, okay. you know, there are certain challenges. So that we are facing, but even government is also trying to give a lot of stress on, on say research, industry funded research. So it will pick up gradually, it has not picked up as yet, but it will pick up. In. Next ticket definitely will be better. Thank you, thank you very thank much. Thank you. We are having Professor Manoj Singh Gaur. Director IIT Jammu with us. Welcome sir, welcome on the panel. Thank you. Sir, my first question to you is, what satisfaction stand looking at the results and placement of your first batch? Uh, we have done quite well, but we would like, would like to do even better than this. Uh, first batch, more than 80% students were placed uh, on campus. And we are, uh, some of them who are being left out, we are still helping them. Many of them gone for higher studies abroad and some of them uh, were placed in Germany and Singapore as well. Okay. So for first batch, given the condition, given COVID pandemic, we have done reasonably well. Okay. How do you see IIT Jammu contributing to India's technological world? Yeah. Uh, from very inception, uh, we created uh, a vision for ourselves and create an agenda uh, that we would like to invent and uh, we want to create uh, the technology for India and with a strong connect with the society. We keep on repeating that we would like to be multidisciplinary uh, in nature. Okay. We would like to solve the real problems. We would like to be translational and we would like to create deployable solutions and we will continue to do it. Okay, sir. So, unique about IIT Jammu, uh, something that isn't in any part of the country. Uh, uniqueness is, it's part of Jammu, right? Okay. We are at Jammu. It's a beautiful city. Uh, it has given uh, a beautiful campus to us. And uh, among all 3G IITs, third generation IITs, we are the first one to move to uh, this new campus, which we are very proud of. We have many other uh, milestones uh, achieved in the last four years, uh, four years plus ex existence. 
we are completely paperless in our actions okay. and that allowed us to function in spite of different kind of lockdowns what we saw in the last two years. We ne never stopped working. So this is one unique feature and uh, as I said earlier that we would like to look at to solve the problems rather than creating research only for uh, blue skies. Okay. Of course, we'll do the fundamental research as well, but our focus will remain that we'll grow in certain identified research verticals. Okay, sir. So, uh, plan to take the courses and program of the institute to enhance uh, level of improvement in IIT Jammu. Uh, yeah. So, this is a uh, ongoing and evolving process. Uh, initially, we were mentored uh, very strongly by IIT Delhi. Uh, IIT Delhi is one of the institute of eminences. So, so we got a strong foundation. Uh, some of the very senior faculty got associated and still associate with us in different developmental activities. Then we started developing our own programs and curriculum. And uh, all the, the, these different constraints of, as I said, uh, kind of lockdowns, we took them as opportunities and start evolving our own themes. And while doing so, NEP, National Education Policy 2020 came and which gave us a very solid framework to define our goals. And uh, uh, as, as I believe, as per our DPR, we are developing our different programs and courses. Uh, which will connect with uh, uh, the UT of J and K, uh, including skills, outreach, different colleges uh, through handholding mechanism and outreach mechanism. Okay, so you being a director of IIT Jammu, uh, why are IITs of India so low in worldwide ranking of education institutions? Um, there, are, there are many reasons for that. Uh, one thing is scale, that typical university structure uh, does not permit us to grow uh, in very large in number. Okay. Uh, the reason is uh, uh, the, the having qualified faculty, having uh, sufficient merit uh, is still uh, a, a very difficult process to get, get uh, into in different disciplines. Uh, India is a big country, but we are moving towards uh, that you know, targeted uh, domain. Uh, secondly, uh, different ranking system have different parameters which are not, not attuned to our systems. So uh, I think this is the evolving process and ranking will also tune to our own ranking. Uh, so first target will remain that how do we create our ranking in the our peer group. But I am pretty sure that in coming years you will see the changes. Now we all the see, uh, first generation IITs like IIT Madras, IIT Bombay and IIT Delhi. Uh, they will, and uh, Institute of Science Bangalore, they will certainly show up in world ranking. Okay. And uh, we are making a very uh, strong uh, presence uh, felt there and very soon. We have Dr. Amitash Shoja, HOD, Social Science and Humanities with us. Welcome sir. Thank you. Welcome on Epilogue. Sir, tell us about your department first. Uh, humanities and Social Sciences in IIT Jammu, it was started in 2016 itself and uh, the primary purpose of humanity courses were to improve the soft skills of engineers, coming engineers and also to improve their languages. So this was the first primary objective but as the institute grew and uh, the department also grew, so we have around 8 faculty members and uh, 11 PhD scholars. Okay. and mostly from so, uh, sociology, economics, okay. uh, cognitive science and philosophy. Language faculties also we have. So we have been doing a lot of uh, courses now for engineering students. Okay sir. Sir, what is the role of humanities in technical institute? Yeah, this is a very important question that we always struggle that uh, humanity and social science courses, what is their role in technical institute where students are going to be engineers. but uh, the point is that engineers, even if they are engineers, they will go back to society and they have to give back to society whatever they have taken. So the sense of responsibility towards society and so that is taught once. And the second thing important aspect is that humanity courses are conceptual in nature. We, people call it as a theoretical course or something, but courses allow you to think, you know, from different perspectives. So questions that you ask, answers can come from various perspectives. And this is what they learn in humanities and social sciences. I think that that understanding allows them to ask 
bigger questions, questions, important questions, and see problems from multiple dimensions, and that helps them in general. Okay, sir. Sir, how HSS of uh, IIT Jammu is different from HSS of other IITs? Uh, yes, uh, we since we are new and we are in Jammu, uh, our students we try to give them very different kind of flavor of humanities. So apart from sociology, so, uh, psychology, philosophy, and language courses, we organize a lot of short-term courses that we call creative art courses in which we try to bring local artists and uh, artisans, those who uh, do some kind of you know, sculpting or even music and if someone is teaching uh, cartooning or something. So we call them and these 14 hour courses are students come and they are always in workshop mode so students also learn about them. Um, Apart from that, we are also into uh, research study. So there is another kind of course that no one else in any other IIT people offer. Undergraduate students coming in for humanities and social science research. So this course allows them to look into research questions that humanities and social sciences ask. And if possible, they might take it up in future research. So I think that these two things make us very different and unique from other IITs. Sir, so how courses of uh, human, uh, humanity courses will help the students, uh, especially engineering students? How is going to help them? Yeah, so as I mentioned that uh, general assumption about humanity courses are that they are theoretical. But as a matter of fact, uh, there are two aspects to it. Number one, uh, humanity courses will uh, can be taught only for its own sake. So people are in society, students, those who become engineers, they will go back to society. So they have to understand nuances of society, that how society works, plus the kind of product they will develop, all kinds of engineering uh, products they will come up with, they have to be used by people. So what are the ethical requirements, what are the issues that are going to be available with them. So these issues they must understand and that only can come from these theoretical courses and as finally as I said that humanity courses allow them to see problems from different multiple aspects and uh, if students can learn that innovation will be easier okay thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank hello we are having dr. Sanat Tiwari with us he is in charge of data center of IIT Jammu welcome sir welcome. thank you so my first question to you is what is the use of data center? Please tell us about the data center which is in IIT Jammu. Uh, well, uh, we call IIT Jammu's data center Agastya and uh, it got uh, established, uh, installed in December 2020 after two years long uh, uh, efforts on that. Uh, our data center uh, technology is comprises three components high performance computing, big data, and cloud facilities. So there are three different uh, facilities. They are, and they together make this data center of IIT Jammu. And uh, I will stop here. So what are the various offerings of the data center of IIT Jammu? Uh, fine. So like, uh, as I said, there are three different components uh, of uh, data center are there. And uh, if we take them one by one, then uh, HPC, this high performance computing, as the name suggests, it is uh, used for research activities where extreme computational efforts are required. So uh, just to give you the numbers, uh, the facility has a, a system, a processor, a professor setup, which comprises of about 3200 single processors which you see in desktops okay so you can see uh, it is 32 times 3200 times powerful than a regular uh, desktop system so uh, the computational jobs which a usual desktop computers cannot do uh, or laptops cannot do eventually you can use this kind of uh, high performance computing to complete those tasks okay. uh, in the same way the clouds they host uh, you can host your services like uh, you want 
to host your website services you want uh, because uh, these days uh, like uh, online education and uh, e-education is becoming a big thing so we have like our LMS Moodle they are also means uh, these services uh, they are all uh, mounted on the uh, our servers which are there in our big data and then similar way we have uh, other services uh, also e-governance e related services and other services that are part of our uh, cloud systems. Okay. So how this data center is going to help the people of Jammu and Kashmir? Uh, well, and it's uh, the first data center which has been opened in the Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, how it's going to help? Well, I will not say it is the first, first in Jammu and Kashmir, I can say. Uh, well, not even uh, first in Jammu Kashmir, but yeah, for educational Education. institutes, Education. it is the first. first. And uh, rank-wise, uh, if the its uh, computational abilities uh, and uh, technology size is uh, taken into the consideration, presently it is 25th biggest uh, uh, data center or computational facility in our country. Uh, its uh, purpose is mostly it is uh, for the students and the faculty of IIT Jammu for educational as well as research purposes, but we have kept it open for JNK reason. The people dif from different uh, educational institutes, such as even from Kashmir, Ladakh, or Jammu, we uh, are open for them. They can uh, contact us, they can uh, uh, explain their problems, they can get some time to complete their tasks on this uh, data center. After all, this is the government's money and uh, we are open to all. Thank you. We are having today Shubham Gaur, the so, uh, General Secretary of Students Council, IIT Jammu with us. Welcome Shubham, welcome with us. Thank you Vaishwam. Shubham, give your introduction, first of all give your introduction about yourself. Hmm. So, this is Shubham Gaur, I am from Jaipur, Rajasthan. Okay. And I joined IIT Jammu in 2018 and currently I am pursuing Civil Engineering at IIT Jammu. And that's good. And how your classes are going during this pandemic? Do you feel any kind of uh, problems, uh, any kind of problem arising out of it in your class work? No, no, classes are going very smoothly. Like initially, it was an issue that how we will shift to the online mode of education, how students and faculties will deal with it. But okay. thanks to the administration and staff of IIT Jammu, that today we are having online education as well as examination and that too flawless. And IIT Jammu was the first to start on, uh, online classes prior to the pandemic. Ah, yes, it was like we foresee it that uh, such kind of situation is going to arise and we started working on it. Okay, Early. and uh, your internships, about how your institute is providing you the internships to the all students who are studying here? Yes, institute, like our training and placement cell helps us in the internships, Okay. whether it is industry or research or research internships in India as well as outside India. Okay, and your placements, uh, recently a batch has passed, uh, passed this institute uh, in the month of January, how was the placement? So placement status is amazing. If you talk about 2016 batch, we got the highest placement of 40 LPA okay. from companies like Amazon, Arista, Optum, LTI okay. and many more. And even in the COVID pandemic time, the placement was not halted. Okay, your placement was not halted. That's great. That's something to clap for. How IIT contribution to the society? How is IIT Jammu contribution to the society as well as the technological world? So, like if you talk about IIT Jammu as an institution of national importance, so we hold a responsibility to develop the surrounding areas in technological as well as social terms. So, if you talk about the pandemic time, we made our chemical engineering department, made sanitizers that we distributed to the frontline workers. We made face shields, masks, and UV sanitizers, UV, like UV sterilizers. So, in that way, we helped the frontline workers to fight with the COVID-19 pandemic. Along with that, like, IIT Jammu as it's growing, so we are like a group of students in Akshashala, they are teaching the construction labor's kids. Also, we go to the surrounding areas to the like Jakti village to teach the students and help them in their academics as well as their career counseling. Okay. And we organize regular awareness programs like donation drives, organ donation awareness, blood donations, etc. Okay. And student life of IIT Jammu? Okay. So, student life at IIT Jammu is really amazing. Like That you're connected uh, to. Uh, right now you're studying that way. So, it's our second home, yeah. I must say. And all the time, like after the study after the academics time when we go to our hostel so that's the main area where we play where we dance we sing and 2 p.m sorry 2 a.m is the normal for us normal for mm -hmm. that's good. and what's the common uh, alumni uh, emotion towards the institute yes alumni like if you talk about our alumni when we talk to them they really want to come back to it jammu and okay. spend some time with us okay. uh, when they see us doing all these fest and different activities okay. so they are proud they feel proud that we are continuing that legacy 
آج کی ڈاکومنٹری بہت ابتدائی نوعیت کی ہے آئندہ آنے والی ڈاکومنٹریز میں اس سے بھی زیادہ کھل کر بات چیت ہوگی کہ مثلا بھارت کی آئی آئی ٹی بھارت کو کیسے چین یورپ اور امریکہ کے برابر لانے کے لیے اپنا کام کر سکتی ہیں بایو ٹیکنالوجی ڈیپ انرجی کوانٹم فزکس نینو ٹیکنالوجی روبوٹکس ایڈوانس بیٹریز سیمی کنڈکٹرز آرٹیفیشل انٹیلیجنس جیسے سینکڑوں اہم سبجیکٹس ہماری ڈسکشنس ٹیوٹوریل ویڈیوز اور ڈاکومنٹریز کا حصہ ہوں گے آج کی اس ڈاکومنٹری کے لیے ہم خاص طور پر ٹیٹو گنجو جی آکریتا رائنا اشیش رائنا مندیپ سنگھ اور وشوا رانجن پنڈتا کے شکر گزار ہیں اس ڈاکومنٹری کی پریزنٹیشن کے سلسلہ میں ہم وشوا رانجن پنڈتا کے خاص طور پر شکر گزار ہیں Thank you.